Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Frederick Edward Fabelia, and I'm here to discuss today about the theories of intelligence. So what is intelligence? The concept of intelligence has been widely debated among members of the psychology community for decades. Intelligence has been defined in many ways, including higher level abilities such as abstract reasoning, mental representation, problem solving, and decision making. It also includes the ability to learn, emotional knowledge, creativity, and adaptation to meet the demands of the environment effectively. So there are so many ways by which intelligence has been defined. Okay, But let us consider the definition given by Robert Star Sternberg. He defined intelligence as the mental abilities necessary for adaptation to as well as shaping and selection of any environmental context. Okay, so what is the historical background in our understanding of intelligence? The study of human intelligence dates back to the late 1800s when Sir Francis Galton, the cousin of Charles Darwin, became one of the first people to study intelligence. Galton was interested in the concept of the gifted individual. So he created a lab to measure reaction times and other physical characteristics to test his hypothesis that intelligence is a general mental ability that is a product of biological evolution. So you can see there the influence of Charles Darwin. Galton theorized that because quickness and other physical attributes were evolutionarily advantageous, they would also provide a good indication of general mental ability. Okay, so let us consider the theories. Some researchers argue that intelligence is a general ability, whereas others make the assertion that intelligence comprises specific skills and talents. Psychologists contend that intelligence is genetic or inherited, but others claim that it is largely influenced by the surrounding environment. So let's look at the theory by Charles Spearman. So he calls it the two-factor theory. Okay, so Charles Spearman was an English psychologist who established his theory back in 1904. To arrive at this theory, Spearman used a technique known as factor analysis. So what is factor analysis? It is a procedure through which the correlation of related variables are evaluated to find an underlying factor that explains this correlation. In the case of intelligence, Spearman noticed that those who did well in one area of intelligence tests, for example, mathematics, also did well in other areas, such as distinguishing pitch. In other words, there was a strong correlation between performing well in math and music. And Spearman then attributed this relationship to a central factor that of general intelligence, which he symbolized with the letter G. Spearman concluded that there is a single G factor, which represents an individual's general intelligence across multiple abilities, and that a second factor, S, refers to an individual's specific ability in one particular area. Okay, so look at the diagram here. You can see there the general intelligence symbolized by G, you find it in the center. And then you have specific abilities such as mechanical, spatial, numerical, and verbal. All of these are symbolized by the letter S. Okay, so let us consider another theory, this one by Louis Thurstone. He called it primary mental abilities. In 1938, Thurstone challenged the concept of G-factor. After analyzing data from 56 different tests of mental abilities, he identified a number of primary mental abilities that comprise intelligence as opposed to one general factor. So, in Thurstone's model, 
he makes use of seven primary mental abilities. Okay, so what are these seven primary mental abilities? You have their associative memory, numerical ability, perceptual speed, reasoning, spatial visualization, verbal comprehension, and word fluency. Right? So these are all defined by Louis Thurston. Okay? All right. And they are all different from one another. Okay. So let's consider the theory by Howard Gardner, uh, a more recent theory. He calls his theory the theory of multiple intelligences. Okay. Following the work of Thurston, American psychologist Howard Gardner built off the idea that there are multiple forms of intelligence. He proposed that there is no single intelligence, but rather distinct, independent, multiple intelligences that exist, each representing unique skills and talents relevant to a certain category. All right. Okay, so if you look at the diagram here, you will see the eight multiple intelligences def defined by Howard Gardner. You have there the linguistic, the logical, mathematical, the spatial, musical, bodily, kinesthetic, interpersonal, intrapersonal, and naturalist intelligence. So let's now go to the theory of Robert Sternberg. So he calls it the triarchic theory. Just two years later, after Howard Gardner's theory came out, Robert Sternberg proposed a three-category theory of intelligence, integrating components that were lacking in Gardner's theory. So if you will notice, each theorist actually reacts to a previous theory and tries to improve upon it, okay? This theory is based on the definition of intelligence as the ability to achieve success based on your personal standards and your social cultural context. So intelligence is actually important to the culture. It is what the culture values and it's what helps you survive in that particular uh, society, okay? so. Look at the diagram here. You have analytic intelligence, creative intelligence, and practical intelligence. These comprise the tri triarchic theory of intelligence by Sternberg. So what is analytic intelligence? It is the mental steps or components used to solve problems. So you analyze. Creative intelligence is use of experience in ways that foster insight. So the more experience you have, the more varied your experience is, the higher the creative intelligence. So that, that follows. How about practical intelligence? This is the ability to read and adapt to the context of everyday life. So this is about adaptation. All right. So what about Cattell's theory of fluid and crystallized intelligence? Psychologist Raymond Cattell first proposed the concepts of fluid and crystallized intelligence and further developed the theory with his student, John Horn. Okay, so this became, became the Cattell-Horn theory of fluid and crystallized intelligence, which suggests that intelligence is composed of different abilities that interact and work together to produce overall individual intelligence. So what's the difference between fluid and crystallized intelligence? Let's find out. So here you have a diagram that shows us what fluid intelligence is. It is inherited. It is the neurophysiological base. So it has something to do with the brain and the nervous system. There is minimal dependence on school learning or acculturation. And there is uh, inductive reasoning or problem sol solving. So fluid intelligence is actually the nature aspect. Uh, it's what you uh, have inherently. Whereas crystallized intelligence comes from the environment. It is accumulated knowledge and information acquired over a lifetime. It is the application of skills and knowledge to problem solving. It is dependent on education. 
It comprises uh, verbal and general knowledge, and it is the nurture side of intelligence. All right. So, looking at both, you can see the difference between the two. So, you see the interaction between nature and nurture in Cattell's theory of fluid and crystallized intelligence. Okay, so that ends my lecture on theories of intelligence. Thank you. All right.